We're going to be live streaming multiple cameras to YouTube. Um, so this is interesting. Our live stream is just about to start here. And uh, I'm here with Andy Chaffield. Hi, guys. Our director of technical support. And uh, we're really interested to do this. because We've had some customers asking us about this. And uh, basically what we're doing is we have multiple uh, cameras. And uh, they should be selectable on the live screen. Uh, oh, there it is. See? So we're going to show you guys how this works. Uh, we're going to really quickly what I want to do is I want to do a desktop capture so I can show you guys what we're doing before we jump right into um, the, the live stream. So really quickly, let's show you guys exactly what is going on. So this is our VMIX. This is what we're streaming from. And then over here, this is our live stream. And as you can see here, there's this little button called Switch Camera. So we can actually hit the Switch Camera button, and it'll show the, the uh, thumbnails for all of the different uh, streams. So here is actually a stream from Andy's desk. Cool. Um, that's live if Andy were to walk over there, which we might do. You want to go walk over there just sure. to show it? Um, Andy will be able to go live from there. So we, you can have up to six cameras in this live streaming um, interface there. So that's really cool, and that's how it works. So Andy will, is going to move over there, and then we're going to get the live stream from him. Um, so let's see, he's over there, he's walking over to his desk, and then um, this stream here is uh, the desktop capture, so that's a little tricky, but you can switch between the two um, really quickly and really easily, so let's get out of that. And uh, we're going to talk about why and how um, you might want to use this technology for live streaming. Uh, so that'll be fun. And again, the snow, it, we got a little snow today. We did get a little bit of snow today. Uh, so it it's almost all snow. gone, but we did get some. We got some snow. I think it was the last snow in March, which was kind of fun, kind of cool. We're excited about kind of springtime being here, but also that last final snow. Um, so without further ado, let's get started. So here we are in our virtual set, and what we want to do is we want to talk to you guys a little bit about uh, why you might want to use multiple cameras in a live stream. Uh, we've got a little presentation prepared, and uh, we think that there's a lot of applications. We've been talking about some applications. So we're talking about oh, live streaming um, to multiple cameras uh, on YouTube. So you just saw us do it. Um, it's, it's fairly straightforward. And we've got a couple videos, we've got a couple things we want to share, um, showing off how this can be done. And uh, I think it's going to be a, uh, a fun little webinar, honestly. Um, so let's get started. So the first thing we want to talk about is the fact of how easy it is to actually do something like this. So um, as you can see here, this is the back end of... Um, of YouTube, so let's go show this off full screen. As you can see there, there's that camera 2 that we've added, and then the add the camera button. So you can name each camera, and then um, you can delete a camera if needed, which we had to do because one of our streams wasn't coming through fully. And then you can select your bit rate. So right there, you can do 1080, 720, all the way down to 480p, um, and you can even enable 60 frames a second. So you can have up to six cameras in this fashion, and then uh, on the actual YouTube frame, that's actually kind of changed. Uh, you know, we were showing that off a little bit there. Um, go back to this desktop capture really quickly, and you can see that uh, now we've got this little um, like switch camera button there. So right down here at the bottom, you can go between the, uh, the camera feeds, which is kind of cool. Um, interesting stuff. Uh, really excited, glad to be part of this. So um, that is the, uh, how that works. And you can have a maximum of six cameras. So, and Andy, you want to kind of talk about how the RTMP works? It's not actual cameras themselves live streaming directly. Well, the way RTMP works is it basically takes, you, you point your camera towards a server, which in this case it's going to be YouTube. Um, and then that takes your, your camera signal and points it back to where you want it to go. In this case, that's going to be the people viewing YouTube. Um, it doesn't work inherently just right out of the box with the cameras. It's something you have to set up. It's something you, you have to have an RTMP server to be able to do it. Um, usually Wowza, Unreal Media Server are two that people use pretty consistently. Mm -hmm. But um, unlike RTSP, 
RTMP is one where you have to put a little more time and effort into getting it set up as opposed yes. to RTSP where you can just get it right out of the box, hook it up to an Ethernet port, and you're streaming. RTMP takes a little bit longer, and there are great programs like YouTube that make it really easy for the end user to use it. Yeah, exactly. And, and so, so it's not just live streaming right off a security camera. You know, we are using some type of, like, we're using vMix, Andy's using Wirecast, yep. um, and we're using both technologies together um, with, what, with, um, with YouTube. Now, do our um, cameras actually do RTMP at this point? They, they can, yes. Okay. They, do, they do have RTMP settings, but again, you need to have a server to be able to send the camera signal to. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So we, and I know we are working on direct integration with YouTube, uh, but I don't believe we have fully integrated that. I'm not point. positive. So it's something we need to talk to our engineers about, but we definitely, for the point of this video was to show how to do it and, and why you would want to even look into it. So um, you can add a thumbnail for each camera. So as you saw in our desktop capture, uh, Andy had a thumbnail for himself. Um, so each camera, let's say you've got the blimp camera, you've got the goalie camera, you've got the you know, broadcaster camera, and then the user can select between those. Um, you can name your camera angles as well. So whatever angle your, you know, your camera has, you, it's, got a, it's got a name, it's got a resolution, and we highly recommend that all the resolutions stay the same. So if you're doing, don't do 11080 and 1720. For the user experience, do them all the same. Um, and then the thi one of the things you want to think about is the bandwidth itself. So there's really two ways to go about live streaming. You can do one live stream where you're mixing all your cameras together, or you can go this approach where you're sending unique individual RTMP streams to the server, and um, that way the user can select between the cameras. If you're doing it that way, your bandwidth will be multiplied by the amount of cameras you're using. So that's something that you really need to be aware of. Um, you know, YouTube has guidelines on what they think a live streaming, uh, you know, bandwidth is going to be. Uh, ideally, you know, you're looking in the neighborhood of like anywhere from two megabits per second to five megabits per second. If, if you're doing HD, between 720 or 1080, um, and there's different, you know, levels depending on your audio compression. But every time you add a camera, you're uh, s multiplying the amount of bandwidth that you're using. So uh, you might want to think about that. The other main difference here is that if you're mixing everything into one nice live stream, at the end of the day, you've got a really nice produced video. If you're just relying on the user to switch between all those cameras, you're not creating a you know, produced video. You're just, you've just got like six live streams going. So it is a little, um, a little different there. Um, we decided to stream via 720p because of this exact reason. Yeah. Uh, we didn't want to do four. I don't think our handle, our network could handle four 1080p signals. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I really Probably doubt not. it. Um, I really doubt it just because uh, I think we have 10 megabits up, and you need to leave some headroom. Um, so we were going to try multiple cameras, and I think it failed because of our upload speeds. Um, so when we ended up going back to 720 and doing just two, uh, it was all right. Um, so just be, be considerate of bandwidth when you're using multiple, multiple Definitely. cameras. So this is a little di diagram of how, how we were planning on doing it today. We ended up just doing one vMix and one Wirecast. Uh, the Wirecast Go, we just didn't have time to do, but Wirecast Go allows you to just take a smartphone, and literally you can stream an RTMP off of it. Oh, wow. Yeah, awesome. To anywhere you want. So y it's mainly used for like YouTube Live and stuff. So they, the way they created it was so that you could like have a smartphone in a concert and stick it up and just stream to all your friends or whatever. Um, so we were going to use that technology to show off multiple cameras, and we ended up just doing two cameras today. Um, but I think we're doing a good job of demonstrating you know, how it works. So let's just go back to that, um, that full screen video again to show the back end. Uh, or actually, you know what we'll do? Let's go ahead back to our... Um, our back end here. So as you can see um, in our event here, this is, this is where all of the events are handled in YouTube Live. This is our creator studio. As you can see, we're live now. And um, it looks like we've got, uh, when we go to the advanced settings, something that we'll talk about in another video, but we've optimized for low latency. So 
optimizing for interaction means we're optimizing for chat so that we don't, if someone's asking us a question in chat, we can do a live question and answer. But you can optimize for less viewer buffering. And what that means, if there's a hiccup in your network or something like that, um, YouTube will know that you actually want it to buffer and s basically in increase the latency, but don't drop frames, don't skip you know, a beat, basically. Uh, and that's much better if you're relying on YouTube to, um, to record all of your, your content. Then over here in the ingestion settings, you can see we've got two live streams. So I've got one here. Uh, it's set for 720p, and uh, it's, it's called the main camera. And then camera two we have is Andy's desk, and that's also set to 720p. So Andy got his own unique stream, right? So that stream was specific for you. I just sent it over to you on your computer, and then you stream to that key. So YouTube knows the difference between the two cameras. Yep. Then in our live control room here, you can see uh, we actually have a bad status on our 720p broadcast. But it's streaming just fine. But it's <laughs> streaming just fine. So just kind of know that that uh, sometimes, you know, YouTube will will tell you that you know basically we need to look into the keyframes. I don't know how how else to put it, but we need to look at that. I don't know. We're trying to figure uh, to suss everything out here. But as you can see, there's our camera feed again. Here's Andy's over here. Um, you can switch between them. If there were six video cameras here, you could switch between six video cameras. And you can see the latency is actually not bad because that's where we just were. So that's how that works. Um, that's really it. We just wanted to show this is a free solution from YouTube. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty sweet to be able to do that, um, to have a completely free solution where you can pull in all of your live streaming and all of your uh, different RTMP streams. You know, I could see this being used for so many applications, but definitely sports, definitely um, churches. No, you know, defi houses definitely of house of worship. Because that get you want it, they especially if you really want it, the user act to, uh, in, um, the user viewing point to be interactive. Mm -hmm. you know, then they feel like they're in control. Yeah, it's um, it's pretty pretty cool. I like it a lot. It's good stuff. We're gonna do more. Uh, obviously, with this type of technology, this is our kind of our first, uh, I hate to say, crash course, <laughs> you know, into using this technology. Uh, we're going to get, as always, we get better and better at what we do. Um, you know, regular live streaming, virtual sets, things like that, uh, we're, we've got in the bag. But, um, you know, some of this stuff we are still learning about. Uh, one of the things I wanted to just really quickly uh, introduce everyone to, since we, we kind of went over everything, is that uh, we are using a virtual set. So uh, we give free virtual sets with every single camera now. And, you know, here we are, just green screen behind us. You know, we're sitting in our conference room. And we're going to do a video, uh, Andy, on a, a studio tour to show people, you know, what cameras, microphones, setups that we're actually doing here. I think that a lot of people have been asking about that. Okay. Um, but it's it looks like we're in a modern studio, um, and there's you know we could make it look like you know we're in at the front of a stage or um, in a house of worship or at a broadcast studio, um, but really we're just using green screen. So it's something that uh, if used right, you know I've heard a lot of people say, oh, green screens are so you know 90s, you know people putting you know purple haze in their background or something. But there is a professional way to use green screens right. and virtual sets, and that's what we try to promote. So I guess that's really it, huh, Andy? Yeah, I think so. All right, well, thank you, everybody, for watching. We appreciate uh, your time. Hopefully this has been helpful. Uh, we will be at NAB 2016. So uh, that is the National Association of Broadcasters show. I messed that up last time. Okay. Uh, 2016 is going to be in Las Vegas. Andy and I will both be there. Yep. Uh, we're interested. We're interested in meeting with all of our dealers, all of our partners, all of our customers. Uh, even if you're just taking a quick look at our our product line, we want to meet with you uh, face to face. So that's a great place to do that. Um, so yeah, we're both excited about that too. Definitely, should be a great time. Thanks everybody. Thanks for watching, guys. Video. You should put on the funky one that I've just